Dear sisters and brothers, we welcome you to the live cast of this Mass for Saturday of week 20 in Ordinary Time. Today we celebrate the memorial of Our Lady, Mother and Queen. Our entrance antiphon. At your right stands the Queen in robes of gold, finely arrayed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You're the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You're the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made the mother of your Son to be a mother and our Queen, graciously grant that sustained by her intercession, we may attain in the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness has seen a great light, on those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoiced at harvest time, as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you break as on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood, is burnt and consumed by fire. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders. And this is the name they give him, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Wide is his dominion in a peace that has no end for the throne of David and for his royal power, which he establishes and makes secure in justice and integrity. From this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
the responsorial psalm. May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore. May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed both now and forevermore. May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, praised be the name of the Lord. High above all nations is the Lord above the heavens, his glory. May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore. Who is like the Lord our God, who has risen on high to his throne, yet stoops from the heights to look down, to look down upon heaven and earth? May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore. From the dust he lifts up the lowly, from the dung heap he raises the poor to set him in the company of princes, yes, with the princes of his people. May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore. Alleluia, alleluia. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. The virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored. The Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are the conceived and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestors, David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy, and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has, in her old age, herself conceived a son. And she whom people call barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary, let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the queenship of Mary. In order to celebrate this feast meaningfully, firstly, we need to have an inkling of what the monarchy is all about. For us, queen and kings do not really impact our lives because we have never been under the rule of a monarch. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, it is important that in the ancient days, in fact, until the 18th century or so, most countries, most nations were ruled by a king or a queen. And the king or queen, he or she was absolute in power. In this kind of system of governance, if the king is wise, good, noble, selfless, the people will make progress. There will be peace for all. Unfortunately, 
most of the earthly kings have failed to meet the true criteria of what a king should be. So often we have found earthly kings and emperors self-serving, self-centered, irresponsible, not caring for the people, but just cared for themselves and their families. Eventually, these kings will be dethroned and there will be people who will take over. So this monarchy system is not the best, but it does not mean that it could not work. Even in our church today, we still have a hierarchical system with the Pope having absolute power over the entire church. In place of monarchy today, we have the democratic system. It is not the best either. While democracy gives freedom to everyone to vote the right man to serve their people, very often this one man, one vote system is not that effective. Very often, someone who stands for office, you need to have money. You need to promote yourself. Today, an election will cost lots of money. And so people who are influential could even buy the person who is standing for election. Sometimes voters are being bought over. And we see that even in democracy, so many corrupt governments as well. So it is not the ideal. And very often those who are elected, they are also obliged to be answerable to the electors or even those people who have helped them to gain power. It is not the best. Whatever it is, whether it's socialist, whether it's monarchy, whether it's democratic, it has its strength, but also weaknesses. And so it is within this context, we can understand why when we celebrate the queenship of Mary, we must think of the ideal king. The ideal king, of course, is the messianic king. Because in the history of Israel, actually all the kings, uh, they were all uh, failures. Even David was a failure. But of course he was humble, he repented. But the kings after David, most of them were really corrupt and depraved. This is the result of earthly kings. And so the first reading from prophet Isaiah, we know that the northern kingdom was uh, conquered by Assyria. And after that, Assyria was trying to conquer the Judah, the southern kingdom. And in the context of this uh, invasion from Assyria, prophet Isaiah had a prophecy here that a messianic king would be born and Judah would be saved from the Assyrian Empire. Indeed, they were saved, but not by the messianic king. They were saved because God answered the prayers of the people. But eventually, they also um, collapsed under the Babylonians. But this promise of this messianic king in today's first reading from prophet Isaiah, setting the people free, giving them hope. And this king, we are told, is a wonderful counselor, mighty God, eternal father, prince of peace, and there will be peace. And who will take this role? Of course, only Christ. Only Christ, the messianic king, can fit into the prophecy of Isaiah. No one would be worthy of that. We need to have a king who is truly God and truly man. And this is the reason why in today's gospel, we have the gospel taken from Luke, where the angel told Mary that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and the child will be called Holy Son of God. And he will be the Son of the Most High. And of course, Jesus is the successor of King David. 
And Jesus is the one who would restore the kingdom to his Father. So it is in this light, therefore, that we can celebrate the queenship of Mary. It's good for you to remember, last Saturday, we celebrate the Assumption of Mary. The Assumption of Mary and the queenship of Mary are very much related. Because remember the Feast of the Assumption, we said Mary overcame sin and death and shared in Christ's victory over sin and death. In the Assumption, that's why we said she enjoyed glorification of her body and her soul because she triumphed over sin. And today, to call Mary queen, queen simply means to say that she who has overcome sin and death now reigns. But it's important for us to take note. Eh? The queenship of Mary is very much related to the kingship of Christ. And we also remember this. When we say Mary is the queen of heaven, don't think that she is parallel to Jesus who is king. So there is a king and there is a queen. Mary's queenship is only analogous to Christ's kingship in terms of intensity, in terms of degree. Only Christ is king. Only he is the one who has won victory over sin. Completely. Only he is the Messiah. Mary shares in Christ's kingship in an analogous way. Which means to say, therefore, when we talk about Christ's kingship, we also talk about our own kingship. Because remember in the first letter of Peter chapter 2, in verse 9, all of us by virtue of our baptism, we are all made kings and prophets. So by virtue of our baptism, we are also called kings because we share in the kingship of Christ. To share in the kingship of Christ means to say we have overcome sin. We have destroyed the enemy. So in the case of Mary, we know that is perfectly done. That is why the assumption of Blessed Virgin Mary is making a reference to Genesis 3.15, where the prophecy said that the offspring of uh, the devil will be destroyed by the offspring of Mary. And Mary together won victory with the Lord Jesus. And so her queenship is totally dependent on our Lord. So when we speak about the queenship of Mary, we're thinking of Mary always in union with Jesus from the moment of his incarnation to his passion, uh, his ministry, in his resurrection, and in his ascension. So without Christ, there is no queenship. So queenship is in terms of sharing in Christ's life, in Christ's victory over sin. So if you want to celebrate this queenship of uh, Mary meaningfully, then we must be like Mary. That's why Mary is called most holy. Uh, in today's gospel, she was said, you are highly favored because Mary lived a sinless life. And so to celebrate queenship of Mary means to say we too want to imitate her in being a true servant of our king by living a life of holiness, to be freed from sin, to be obedient to the word of God as Mary did in today's gospel, behold the handmaid of the Lord. It is obedience to the word of God, living a life of charity, that is what makes us kings and queens. And in the final analysis, to call Mary queen of heaven, we must understand it is also a grace of God. Uh, it is not because Ma Mary merited to be a queen. No. It, she has been blessed and graced by God because of her role in the incarnation and in the Paschal mystery. And so if Mary 
is called queen, it is not because she worked for it. Rather, it's a title that God has bestowed upon her and which the church confirms this title simply because Mary truly shares in Christ's kingship over um, sin, over death, and most of all, Mary now in heaven as the mother always interceding for us. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we observe this memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we bring you our offerings, O Lord, praying to be given strength by the humanity of Christ, who offered himself to you on the cross as the unblemished oblation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints. And especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo a thankful hymn of praise. For truly even to earth's ends you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you look on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending now your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I lift you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And be for each other a warm sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. Blessed are you who have believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord will be fulfilled. Act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, you have given us your blessed mother to be our queen, to lead us in our struggle against sin, 
and moves the wall as a sign and a foretaste of the resurrection that is to come. Through her, we are able to live a life already in heaven. Lord Jesus, you have given us your mother because you dwell, your Holy Spirit lived in her. We do want to share in this gift as we receive you in the Eucharist, your body and blood, which we cannot receive you now sacramentally, but you can come to our hearts spiritually and fill us with your spirit, just as you filled your Blessed Mother with the Holy Spirit, so that we too can conceive you in our heart and become fleshed to others, that in seeing us, they too will come to encounter your love and your mercy. Amen. Let us pray. Humbly receive this heavenly sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that we who reverently celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary may merit to be partakers at your eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Angel Lord declare unto Mary. And she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, most holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Wherefore, beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, through incarnation of Christ thy Son, who was made known by the message of an angel, and by his passion and cross, we brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, dear sisters and brothers, for worshipping with us this Saturday. We hope that you can join us tomorrow, bright and early, at 10 a.m. We'll see you then.